In this Godot tutorial, I'll teach you how you can create an item generation system that is going to sparkle the loot fever within you. The kind of loot fever we used to have with Diablo 2, Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. Now, I'll immediately say the system is not going to be as complex as in those games because that complexity also comes with a lot of time requirement for game balancing. And time, indie and hobby game developers are not a good combination. Time management is important to us, so you know you have to reduce that complexity a little bit. With that said, we will, however, introduce item rarity, common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary items. We will introduce magical items, prefixes, and suffixes, and so forth. So there will definitely be some interesting things here, and I'll also immediately say off the bat, this is just one way to do it. You don't have to follow this tutorial one by on one. You might want a system that is slightly different in your game. I'm just going to show you a system as maybe I would make it in a casual game. And hopefully you draw inspiration from that and some ideas on how you can make your system work. So let's get into it. Before we dive into Godot and the code, we're first going to have a look at the item data table as the code will be making many references to this table. As some of you may recognize, it's a slimmed down version of the grid based inventory item data table that I used in the previous tutorial series that I made. We got an item ID, we got the name of the item, we got two weapons, a shield and three armor pieces. We got some random categories that you might need to put these items in an inventory or to categorize them properly. And then most importantly for this tutorial series, we have the stats and we have the rarity modifiers. So in case that we roll a more rare item, we're gonna multiply the base stat with the rarity modifier to get the final stat of this item. Now let's switch over to Godot and some code. Here in Godot, I got a brand new project. So you can do this from scratch if you wanna follow along or you can tag it on top of a project you might already be working on. I've got my scene handler main scene, which is the scene that's gonna load up when the game starts. This is pretty much an empty shell at the moment. We currently have an instanced scene in that, that is the main scene. If we have a look at that main scene, that is pretty much an empty node 2D nothing special about it we do have some script on there which we're going to look at in a moment as the item generation system but before we do that let's first have a look at one singleton that the project currently has that's called game data and in game data we of course have our item data table that's the table we just looked at we get that into go that through these five lines of code under the ready function that loads in the json if you don't know how to do that if you don't know how to get a json out of that google spreadsheet then i'll put a link up there so you can watch that video and you'll be up to speed then we have three more variables here that are game data so this is static data that's just general facts about the game we have the item rarity distribution which determines how often which particular rarity of an item would spawn in the game so that is something we're going to be referencing when we generate an item and you can very easily tag that into for example a chest which needs to generate some items Common is going to drop 60% of the time, uncommon 27, and so forth, 9, 3, and 1% chance for legendary items. Then we have the item stats. That's simply a, a list of stats we're going to need to loop through the, most, the possible stats that are going to be added to an item. So it's going to be attack, defense, and block, just like we saw in that item data sheet. And then we have the item scaling stats. What this does is this is going to be the stats that are going to be scaling with the rarity modifiers. So as you can see, block is not in there because block is usually expressed in a percentage chance that you block an attack. And if you were to take the legendary modifier, add that over the block percentage, you might end up with shields that have a block percentage which is higher than 100 and that is likely to break your game. So in some cases, you wanna exclude some of these stats from the multiplier of the rarity so that you don't have any game breaking stats on your items. So with that said, we have quite a lot of data here. I guess it's now time to start coding a item generation system. All right, so we're here on the main scene. And as you can see, that scene is completely empty. There's nothing here. We're not gonna build any fancy UIs. We're gonna do everything through code. Having a look at that code, the first thing we do is we're gonna listen to the input event UI accept. 
And by default, without changing anything in your project settings, UI except is bound to, well, one of the keys is bound to is the space bar. So we're gonna use the space bar to generate an item. As we hit that space bar, we're gonna do some item generation and that item generation is gonna look through a couple of functions to determine the, the totality of the item, what the item is going to be. And we're gonna go and take this one step at a time. Starting from the top, we have our function item generation. We start this function by defining the new item, which starts off as an empty dictionary. And as we go through the various functions of this item generation system, we're gonna be adding keys to this dictionary that are gonna hold values of important stats to make this item functional. The first thing we want to know is the item ID that we're gonna be pulling. So we have the item determined type. The item determine type function returns the new item type, which will then be stored under the item ID key in that new item dictionary. We get that item type by first defining it as a new variable. And then we define item types as the game data singleton item data keys. What this does, it returns an array of all the keys in the item data dictionary that sits on the game data singleton. If we have a quick look at that data table, that will return these six item IDs in an array. Now we wanna randomly choose one of these items from that data table. So we're gonna randomize the seeds that make sure that every time we run this function, we get a different outcome or randomly outcome. We define a new item type as one of the indexes of item type. So we're gonna take these six items and we're gonna randomly draw one index and we get that random number through the randy function and we take the item type's size, so how big the array is, as the input from which array of numbers we can draw a random number. So this draws a random integer from this item types array, which we then store as a new item type and we return that new item type to the item ID key right here. Now I got a print function here. So as we play this game, I can use my space bar and you can see in the output, you can see that every time I press the space bar, we get a random item selected from that list. And that goes, if I press a little bit more, from 101 right there, all the way to 106. And those are our six items. Now, right now I'm pulling this array of the total game data that we have available to us. But if you have maybe maps or maybe a bigger game, you might maybe instead of pulling uh, the total list of items to draw from, from the item data table, you might wanna draw that from a loot data table. So maybe you got a specific map in your loot data, data table, and then you can draw a random uh, item from that list. And you can even put weights in there uh, to make sure you have different chances for various items to, uh, to spawn in. I did a little bit of a video on, on that uh, in a, one of my first tutorial series, or actually the very first tutorial series. I'll put a link up there. Um, it's, it's the very first tutorial series that I made, so the quality might be uh, a little bit lower, uh, but it does go into how you can add weights in a loot data table to, uh, to draw, then draw from. So having said that, let's now move on to the, uh, the next element of our function, and that is to determine the rarity. For the item rarity, I'll uncomment this line of code here. We add the new entry as a key in the new item dictionary and we determine that through the item determined rarity function. This function is gonna look pretty similar for the majority of the part as the item determined type. We define the new item rarity. We are gonna return that new item rarity. We also define all the rarities that we can choose from, just like we did with the types, only now we use the item rarity distribution, the variable we have defined on the game data. So it's gonna put common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary in an array. Now, once we have that array, we're gonna randomize the seed, just like we did there, and we're gonna do a rarity roll, randy percentage, 100 plus one. What this does, it's gonna draw a random value between one and 100. We are not able to simply draw a random uh, index from the array as we want to include the weights that we have defined in our game data. We wanna include the 60, the 27, and the nine, etc. So we draw a random number from one to 100. Then we're gonna iterate over those five rarities we have to find in the item rarities table or array. And we're gonna check if the rarity rule, and let's, let's take one number and let's iterate over this function and see how this would work. And let's say the rarity rule was 90. So we're gonna check if 90 is smaller or equal to 
and then we're going to look at the game data item rarity distribution of i now as we have defined common first common will be the first um, entry into the array so it's first going to check common and common will have 60 so the question is is 90 smaller than or equal to 60 and the answer is of course no it's not 90 is bigger than 60 so else is going to hit and then we take the rarity roll so that's 90 and we're going to deduct that value that we just checked again so that means that we take 90 minus 60 now the rarity roll is 30 then we're going to go over the next i. We're again going to check is 30 smaller or equal to, in this case, 27. And that's no, that's not the case. That is still bigger. Else will hit, we'll deduct 27 from 30. We are left with 3. Then on to the next index in item rarities. That is going to be the rarity rare. Is 3 smaller or equal to 9? And yes, that is the case. We are smaller than 9, so the new item rarity is i. The new item rarity is rare. We return that rarity to the main function and our item rarity is now rare. Now, if I hit play for this, we should see that in our output. So now when I press the spacebar, well, we are lucky we immediately get a rare item. But you see that most of the time it will be common and uncommon. And only very rarely, well, we got an epic one, we are kind of lucky here. You see that mostly it's common, uncommon. And in the 9, the 3 and the 1 percentage, we see the epic rare and legendary pop up as you can see that uh, that works just fine there we are lucky we have one legendary and i, I think i clicked about 60 times or something like that maybe so uh, i guess that works pretty good so with that we have a rarity including a rarity distribution now next up is of course magical stuff so we got these two functions right here but i guess i gotta disappoint you a little bit because those two I, uh, functions currently have no code because we're going to include magical items and then determine the suffixes and prefixes of those magical properties in the next tutorial so this will be a two-part series and i'll definitely invite you in the comment section down below to let me know what you want me to include more in this item generation system like i don't want to make it too complex as i announced i got two episodes planned but if you guys got a good idea i'm more than open to your suggestions so leave a comment down below if you uh, if you feel like you want to uh, know something else about uh, item generation or item systems what we are going to do though is we are going to determine those stats so that is the next three lines of code here and uh, i guess let's get into those the way that these three stats work is we're going to iterate over every index in game data item stats so going to the game data we're going to iterate over attack defense and block and we're going to check if the item in the item data table has that stat to it now i only got attack defense and block because i got two weapons three uh, armors uh, armor pieces and a shield but you may have some some other uh, of course elements to it you might also have agility and intelligence and wisdom and all kinds of other when we, once we start adding magical properties we have fire damage and poison damage and lightning damage and all that good stuff um so it's just these three stats for now as i'm with a tutorial project that is small in scope um, but definitely expand on that for whatever your game needs so we're going to iterate over those three items and we're going to check if the item data of that particular item uh, for that particular stat that we're iterating over is not null. So basically what that does, if we have a look at that, the data table, imagine we have a sword or maybe let's take a steel helmet as an example. If we have a steel helmet, it's gonna check attack and gonna check does attack have a value for this particular entry of uh, our item ID entry. And of course the answer is no. And this JSON exports attack empty field as null so that is going to be null and then we don't have to include that stat on this particular item now defense of course does have a value so defense will uh, will hit and then the function will run so we're going to iterate over every one of those stats then we're going to determine the, a new key for for new items so new item is going to get again a new key but now that key is i so it's either going to be attack defense or block as a new key of that new item and we determine that with the item determine stats function now we have to push a couple of variables to that function to make sure that that function can uh, can work properly we need the item id of the item that we're actually uh, determining the stats of we need the rarity which we have already rolled in the previous uh, code and we need the stat for which it needs to calculate the values right now having a look at that item determined stats we determine the stat value and that is what we return that's the continuous template that we're doing again and again 
we're gonna check if game data item scaling stats has the stat that we're currently dealing with. So that stat that comes in in the function. And that is of course, because we don't want to multiply every stat with that rarity modifier. So in case this will be blocked, it would not multiply it or you do not want to multiply it with the rarity modifier. But we do want to do that for defense and attack. So depending on whether or not that item scaling stats has that stat, we are going to either be taking the stat and multiplying that with the rarity multiplier. And otherwise, we're just going to take the stat as is from the item data table. We return that stat and before you know it, we actually have a randomly drawn item with a random rarity based on a rarity distribution with the right stats based on its rarity multiplier. So now when I hit space, you can see that we uh, we pulled the item 05, so it's going to be an armor piece. It is just common, so it's just going to take its normal defense value of 260. And if we have a look at that steel armor, indeed defense 260. Now, if we were to continue that and we get a rare item, don't only draw uncommon items, Stefan, that's not good. Here we have, for example, uh, a sword. We have an uncommon item, uh, item 10001, that is a sword with an attack of 69. Let's have a look at that. The base defense attack is, uh, is 60, and we have an uncommon multiplier of 1.15, indeed, making this attack 69. Let's continue, maybe get something a little bit more rare. Um, here we got a rare item. Oh, that's also a sword 84. So that seems to be working. Maybe we can get um, preferably a shield. Let me see. I believe that is uh, item 03. Oh, here we got a, a shield right here. And you can see it has a block of 25 and a defense of 130. If we match that with the table, we had 100 defense by default with a rarity multiplier of 1.3. So that went perfect, 130. But the block was not multiplied as we excluded that from the scaling stat. And that remains at 25. And just like that, you got a little bit of a first item generation system going from which we are going to expand. Like I said, magical items, true or false, including, if true, the prefixes and suffixes. And then, of course, calculating the stats of those particular magical properties based maybe also with scaling from the rarity of the item. It's going to be up in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, let me know in the comments down below what you, uh, what you think and what kind of ideas you have for me to expand on this new tutorial series. That was it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what your ideas are. Smash that like button. And as always, hit subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on that next video. Hope to see you guys then. And until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.